Hi everyone, welcome back to High School Science 101. Electric skateboarding has become really popular these days and I've been lucky to get my hands on one of these which is one of the latest and most innovative boards called a one wheel. It's a lot of fun but there's also lots of science involved as well so let's check it out. The One Wheel is produced by a company called Future Motion Incorporated based in California. Its founder, Kyle Dirksen, is an engineer and it took him about 8 years of prototyping to eventually develop a model that was capable of being sold commercially. There have been 4 models of One Wheel. There was the One Wheel Original and the One Wheel Plus and both of those are discontinued. And now there's the One Wheel Plus XR and the One Wheel Pint which is this one here. The One Wheel Plus XR has the biggest range of about 20 to 29 kilometers and has the highest top speed of about 30 kilometers an hour. The one wheel pint is nearly half the price and it's also nearly half the range too at about 13 to 14 kilometers but it still has an impressive top speed of about 26 kilometers an hour. Scientifically what's going on here because with a normal skateboard you've got four wheels and balancing isn't really a problem but with this it's hard enough just to balance on one wheel let alone travel 10 or 20 kilometers on it. And so the way we explain this is through a principle called an inverted pendulum. Here we have a regular pendulum, this is a Newton's cradle, and we have pivot points up here, and we have our weights which form our center of mass down the bottom here. And so our center of mass moves below our pivot points. And now, what if we were to invert this pendulum? Like so. Now we have our center of mass above our pivot points. And so if it moves this way, the whole thing will collapse. And it's fairly unstable. And an example of this, an inverted pendulum, is if you have a rolled up piece of paper and you put it on your hand and you try and move your hand to keep the paper upright. You're moving the pivot point. The pivot point is the bottom of the paper on your hand. It's pivoting. And the center of uh, mass is the paper and so all you can do is move that pivot point to try and keep that center of mass above the pivot point and keep that paper upright. The same thing happens here with the one wheel. When you're standing on it and balancing on it, your center of mass, your body, is above the pivot point and if you lean forward, this wheel will engage in this direction to try and get itself underneath that center of mass and if you lean this way, again, the wheel will engage in this direction and try and recenter the center of mass that's above that pivot point. I'm now going to show you some of the features of the one wheel pint. At the back here we have the charging port and it takes about two hours to fully charge the pint. You can get a supercharger though and that charges it in about 50 minutes. At the front here we have the power button and when we press that this LED bar lights up and this is now showing us that it's fully charged because all of the lights are lit up. It also flashed magenta which shows you that simple stop is engaged. And that's another really cool feature of the one wheel pint that I'll show you later on. This LED bar will also show you how much pressure is being applied to each side of this front pad. And the motor will only engage when both sides have equal pressure. Now let's take it outside for a ride. Okay, now we're ready to ride our one wheel and I've picked a nice quiet area where I'm not going to run into anyone or into any cars and safety is a big priority here. Especially if you haven't snowboarded or skateboarded or surfed before, highly recommend that you wear your knee guards, elbow guards, wrist guards and definitely wear a helmet. Alright, I'm going to start by putting my back foot roughly in the middle of the rear pad and then my front foot I'm just going to rest on top of that front pad and make sure that I've got an even amount of pressure between my toes and my heel. And I can tell that by the LED bar that I was showing you before. And I can see that the whole LED bar is blue, which means I've got an even amount of pressure on that front foot. Otherwise the motor won't engage. So that's ready to go. I'm happy with my rear foot placement. And we can now lean forward 
and engage the motor and it balances for you. And now to disengage, as I showed you before, when it turns magenta, I can lean back and it'll disengage the motor and I can dismount. I can engage, I lean forward, to disengage, I lean back, the light turns magenta and now I can stop and dismount. Your speed is controlled by the angle of the board. So if you put more pressure on the front of the board where my hand is with your front foot, then it'll start to accelerate. If you put more pressure on the back of the board where your back foot is, it'll start to decelerate. It'll also start to tilt the nose up and do what's called pushback if it's low on battery or if you're going too fast. Turning is pretty much the same as on a snowboard if you've ridden a snowboard. If I'm going forwards in this direction and I put pressure on my toes, so on the toe side of the board, the board will turn right. If I put pressure on the heels, on the heel side, then the board will turn left. So turning is really a combination of toe side and heel side leaning. So that's it for today, the one wheel time. Heaps of fun, but also a really cool application of science. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.